All right, we are back with another round of the May Harry Potter Trading Card Game Revival Tournament. Uh, I believe this is round four, and we've got a game between Mike Diaz and Jerry V here. Sorry, Jerry, I don't know your last name off the top of my head. Um, and we're going to go ahead and see what these guys have going on. I know that because this is round four and this is still a top table, I think both these guys are 3-0 and undefeated. And I'm going to let them know they can begin. Looks like Mike, of course, we've already seen a game by Mike. He is playing the uh, Seamus fitting in Burrow combo deck, but Jerry looks like he's playing Hermione. And uh, I believe that this is the promo Hermione, right? This is the one from the starter, I think. Maybe not, but it has the different art. Um, <clears throat> this is still the same Hermione that we've seen him play, though, where he likes to ramp all the way up and do his Snape's disaster type stuff, uh, where if you have two or more lessons in play, you can use action to play two lessons instead of one. Pretty neat. All right, so these guys, ah, oh, thank you for revealing their hands to me as well. Gonna make this very easy to, uh, to read what's going on and commentate a bit. Looks like Jerry is taking his mulligan. Remember revival rules, of course, mulligans are allowed. And I don't know if he likes this hand much better. Yeah, I don't know, he's a ramp deck, so he probably likes seeing a lot of lessons, but having nothing other than lessons, a little tricky thankfully caught by snape is banned in revival so having an opening like this um where you have to play all your lessons out and you can't really do anything else to hold on to someone is an irrelevant line right you just want to play your lessons build 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 and go 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 it looks like uh, i would have assumed the jury would be bringing his his snape um you know control deck here but it looks like it is a creature transfiguration deck. And one of the benefits, of course, of the transfiguration lesson type in Revival is drawing the sword. Cool spell that lets you... Um... <laughs> Wait, I think I think these guys tried to do a thing to have on tap flip the cards around. And now, um, now the spells are sideways instead of right side up. <laughs> That's funny. So now these cards are right. But the, uh, but the spells aren't as okay. Um, drawing the Sword, of course, is a new revival card where if you have a Gryffindor, Wizard, or Witch in play, uh, you're allowed to play it. You can't play it otherwise. And then you get to do six damage divided however you would like among any number of creatures. Uh, so, of course, it's good for killing a few of your opponent's creatures. Also, uh, you know, has some clever uses for things like triggering your own bow truckles. Or a little bit of both. And yeah, it looks like Jiri is... Uh, he gets those first two lessons in on turn one. So turn two, he's actually able to play four lessons thanks to Hermione Granger. Um, the problem being, you know, he doesn't really have anything in his hand besides uh, these lessons. But I think Mike's escaping the Dursley is actually going to help Jiri more than he would think it would here. As he's able to just go into the deck... And, uh, and get himself whatever he has that lets him draw back up to a high number of cards in hand. I'm sure now that he's at six power, um, whatever his draw engine is in the deck or whatever his plan for having low amount of cards in hand is, uh, he should be able to go search it out by solving Escaping the Dursley. Looks like he's deciding whether or not he wants to drop one more lesson for the turn or whether he wants to play like a two action card off of the Escaping the Dursleys. Uh, in my opinion, he probably is gonna wanna ram out a character here like Peeves ideally. Um, and that's exactly why Mike is getting himself low on cards. I mean, Ron is going to help him draw up the cards in hand too, right? If he goes down to no cards. So what he'll do next turn, he'll draw a card for turn, discard both of them for Seamus, then use an action on Ron and have five cards in hand instead of two. Um, but one of the cool things about this is the best solve for escaping the Dursleys is his opponent playing a Peeves, which actually just helps him too. So he can find either way. Escaping the Dursleys is... Uh, is definitely going to be forcing Jerry to play in a certain way here. He hasn't minded so far because he's able to just, you know, happily, as we call it, live at the Dursleys, where he's just going to, you know, deal with these restrictions and just play lessons every turn. But eventually, you know, you just got to get out of there. You got to escape. Looks like we're opting for the line where we play the Transfiguration lesson. Now we're going to solve escape. I imagine. Yes, of course. 
This is probably going to be a scribble of fours, right? Now that we got up to seven. Scribble of fours here on uh, Ron's youngest brother would actually be really... No, it looks like we got Forbidden Corridor instead. Interesting. The Forbidden Corridor is worth mentioning. Um, this is a location that before each player's turn, they choose a card and play and they get rid of it. And at the end of each turn, if any player has no lessons of play, or sorry, if that player has no lessons of play, discard the card at the end of their turn. Basically, that checks both turns. It makes the player sacrifice something, probably lessons. Um, and in return, the Forbidden Corridor is going to uh, leave the field when there are no lessons. So the idea is that Jiri can play lessons faster than Mike can play lessons. So this is less of a two-sided effect and a little bit more of a one-sided effect with, you know, an investment involved in that payoff. Um, Mike isn't too worried as long as he has lessons to stack. But he's certainly sitting here thinking about um, what he wants to do with this turn. And what's interesting to me is I think he used an extra action to draw a card even after... Um, so he, he gained for Seamus, then he used Ron to draw five, and then, yeah, he used two actions to draw cards, so, um, he'll be sacrificing this potion next turn to the Forbidden Corridor. Teacup to Rat isn't going to do anything for us, we're going to use an action to draw a card, and, oh, Lost Notes, and that's going to be what we play here. It's going to force the Forbidden Corridor to nick, uh, Ron Youngest Brother, and I actually think that Mike is in a pretty tough spot here, uh, you know, with that lost nose coming down to get rid of his potions. I thought that he was going to play, um, I guess escaping the Dursleys are locked in puts him in the exact same position, except the difference is he, the fallback is he has the potion to get rid of. Um, his opponent would have had to search for lost notes, I guess, by solving escaping the Dursleys, but they would have, right? His opponent had an empty hand, so... I don't really know if there's a way around that there. Um, now that the Forbidden Corridor is down. Mike is going to need to do... He needs something else, and these are really it. Um, yeah, so what's going to happen here is... Yep, exactly. At the beginning of the turn, he has to sacrifice Ron. Um, now he has to play the turn. If he drops, no lessons. The corridor will go away at the end of the turn. But that's where Jiri wants his opponent to be, right? He wants his opponent to be sitting there with an empty field. He doesn't mind if Forbidden Corridor leaves at that point. Uh, Mike is trying to decide what he wants to play. Uh, I think that, you know, you're just going to run out of the Snape here. Oh, he's going to play Ron Youngest Brother. Uh, you know, it's deciding between the two. You don't game with Seamus, I don't think. You end your turn. You let the Forbidden Corridor go. Yep, there. Yeah, you keep the Ron out. That's fine. I kind of like the Snape just because I feel like he needs to get to lessons. But... Uh, he's a little bit more worried about making sure he has a way to draw cards. So. Oh man, his opponent drew the Snape too. It's funny as uh, if his opponent had just drawn that for turn, he probably would have played it. I wonder if Mike will play the Snape here or if he'll be more careful and play two lessons. Um, I would like to see Snape gain an action and play a lesson. You could gain, you could get rid of one of the Dursleys and the Burrow probably. Or maybe just the Hover Charm since I don't think you'll be building to four unless you're getting to the burrow combo turn upper charm is actually going to be having a pretty interesting use of this then i think you just get to choose one of their cards and play and return it to their hand but because of the nature of a lot of like the lock type stuff bersley's and locked in uh, a lot of times you're making sure that they can't just replay that card making it a little better than just you know a one-to-one -one. So it's going to be locked in. We're going to gain discarding a burrow and a Dursley. We are going to play down the potions. Locked in is going to prevent our opponent from running out his own Snape. Uh, he might just run out the Forbidden Corridor, in which case I think we would pop the locked in. So he's probably, I don't know. If you're Jiri, do you solve locked in here? 
this card, four cards from your hand. I mean, you have to solve the locked in, right? Because you don't want one fewer action. So do you get rid of everything except Forbidden Corridor and then play the Forbidden Corridor down? Probably the play, right? You get rid of everything but Forbidden Corridor. You draw the three for locked in, of course. They play you the Forbidden Corridor. Yep. Then Mike starts his turn and he gets rid of the potion lesson. And he draws a charms return. Moving his Ron's youngest brother over there, really just sitting here contemplating. Trying to come up with a plan, right? And you see the Forbidden Corridor, you know you're going to have to do this whole thing. Uh, you probably just want to run out non lesson cards and make the Forbidden Corridor a six cost just this card one lesson, right? Uh, Snape is a cute way to get around the Forbidden Corridor. So I think you just play the Snape here and you uh, pass the turn, right? I think, oh, actually, if you think that the cards in your hand are bad enough, you probably discard two to Seamus. Pass. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't even draw the card, right? Because you want to activate a Ron. So you don't really like these cards in your hand. You're, you're just going to try and get to the Ron as fast as you can. Yeah, heal with the Snape. That's fine. Put in some better hits. Putting Reparo back is it? I guess just, you know, anything totally playable. Surprised when I'm healing a few more lessons. There we go. Basically, anything that isn't escaping the Dursleys or these extra lessons, because uh, escaping the Dursleys, what your opponent's lessons are set up is scary. They just go find the perfect spell. We did end up, uh, we did end up using an action to draw a card there. Pretty cool. I think that there's, you know, either way is fine. But definitely discarding to gain the action to drop number, you know, total number of cards in hand. So that you get to the youngest brother sooner. Also, um, just drawing an extra card, you know, discard two, draw one, just try, you know, trading in two cards you're certainly not going to use for one you might use. Nothing wrong with that when you don't have too many lines. It does get rid of that Forbidden Corridor again. Here he has the Dobby here, the one of that players are allowed only one copy of Dobby's disappearance and revival. He's restricted. Still a very powerful card. I mean, no matter how you slice it, the Dobby is going to walk back two actions for Frank here. Uh, Jury, I think, deciding whether or not he wants to play it or just kind of pocket the Dobby and hold on to it for a turn. Oh my god, that is a hell of a top deck if you're going to use your first action to just look for more to do, right? Uh, you're going to get Hedwig, which you can play right now off your six lessons. Get back one of those Forbidden Corridors if you want, or get back, you know, any of those... Um, any of those cards there so what's cool here is you use your first action oh yeah now he only has two actions a turn i was gonna i'm so used to having more with things like seamus i was gonna say you headwig back the uh the dobby and then you can get both things but he used the first action to draw a card so he can't quite yeah just gonna go ahead and park the uh forbidden corridor in hand keep the dobby in hand but I think that one thing we see here is that if Mike had a way to just get another lesson or two set early, uh, or had seen the Snape or the Flavic a little bit earlier, um, I think that Jerry's deck looks like it kind of gets to low hand size and chills there. Yeah, it has things to tutor other things, and it has things to get cards back from the discard, but I don't see... Uh, maybe there's like a, a couple characters we haven't seen yet. Well, forget my yawns, guys. Sorry. Long day.
Yeah, so what we saw Mike do is, uh, you know, he drew for turn. He played out two Charm Lessons from his hand. He discarded two cards to gain an action, put him to zero cards in hand. And then he used uh, Youngest Brother to draw five. And now we're starting to see some of the stuff we want as Mike, right? We get to, okay, we've got two Lessons here on the table. We've got two Lessons in hand. Very interesting that Jerry's using first action to just draw a card. But again... I guess if you know that the top card of your deck is always gasoline, you go ahead and you just use your first action to draw a card. Dribble of Fours is an incredible value here. Um, uh, thankfully, he's not... Well, thankfully, I say. I don't want to sound like I'm rooting for Mike, but I'm rooting. what I'm rooting for here is a longer game, right? I'm rooting for the closest game, the most exciting game possible. Um, I think Mike would really hate to see a Scribble of Fours come down, but thankfully, Jiri is only at six lessons right uh, still deciding what he wants to do with that second action. I think the Forbidden Corridor drop is probably coming. Yep, there it is. He drops it down onto the table. I was just about to say, uh, that's the theme, right? Uh, what I kind of like here um, is that Mike knew that this was going to be coming. He had that telegraph of Hedwig grabbing the Forbidden Corridor. So it's not like he built these lessons into thinking like, oh god, what do I do if that gets played? He actually put them down, uh, almost made sure to put down two at once as some insurance. So I think that the fact that we had that Dobby, um, we could have used it to kind of make this Forbidden Corridor worse for Mike. As we see the first thing that he sacks to the Forbidden Corridor, oh, it's going to be Snape. Uh, he can reuse that heal later in the game. Smart move. Mike is probably looking at this hand of Abbott in his hand and thinking that he wants to use that so he can sack it to the next corridor trigger as well. Forbidden corridor on Jiri's side of the field isn't going to be as nice this time. Probably looking to get rid of the Hedwig as I'm sure the follow-up play is a lesson and then Dobby into Scribble Force basically wipes almost anything off of Mike's board. And Mike's going to go ahead and try and slow that down with a locked in here. Discarding a memory charm and a poke. Very interesting. Uh, dropping another lesson. And he's just trying to get to combo town. I mean, he knows that that's how he wins, right? Is the little combo. So he's trying to build up to where he can play that burrow and snuffling duo. The way Mike's deck is, we're still two turns at most. Or sorry, at least. I don't even know. Two turns at least away from Little Combo. Um, he needs an action to play Burrow. He needs an action to play Snuffling. He needs to draw both of them. And he needs to increase his mana base. So he can actually do all of that in as little as four actions. He does get three actions a turn with Seamus. I don't think it's quite enough. So, you know, next turn would look like discard Hannah and whatever he draws for turn and uh, then play the wand, then activate Ron and then play one of those cards. But he doesn't get that chance as Dobby is going to come down and send Ron back to the hand. Um, looks like we opted to sack a transfiguration lesson at the beginning of the turn. So we sacked transfiguration to the corridor then we Dobbied the Ron and then we played two care magical creatures from our hand we're getting ready for this welsh green dragon for sure uh wait how did we do all that through locked in wait hold up
That's what I get for saying something. I was like, how did he play two lessons? Uh, that's literally what his starting character does. We talked all about that. Go ahead and slap me on the wrist there. That was my bad. Yeah, so he uses Hermione to, to kind of play down the lessons. It's the whole point, right? Is that this isn't supposed to be as bad for you because you get to do that. Still not really a fan of sacking my own action. Um, whether it's half an action or not. But still, I, I get it. I get it, right? It, the idea is pull ahead and keep them behind. So far, it's working out pretty well. Forbidden Corridor has always been one of those popular, uh, those control type cards. It's an interesting angle on control, right? It's like, uh, letting them choose, but also making sure they have nothing but bad choices. Is Hedwig gonna go just so that we can play our well-screened dragon? Right? I mean, like, uh, yeah, I guess so. We've put ourselves in that position, right, where we uh, we can't get rid of a lesson. Bindo, almost, yeah. So, I mean, but this is gonna be a hell of a turn, right? We're gonna well-screened dragon and scribble fours, um, and that's gonna be pretty huge. Yikes! Uh, he's gonna hit the lesson. No, oh, sorry, he can't. God, guys, I'm all over the place. He can't do both of those because of locked in, but uh, it actually might be dribble of fours and pass, right? Because the Welsh is going to shoot some of his lessons. Um, dribble of fours, he can play here, try and force it so that Mike never gets to those lessons, right? Like, Mike has no win con if he doesn't get to a couple lessons here. Um, so you're, you're really going to try and. Get rid of those first, then Welsh Green. Since you don't have any way to draw cards, I think it's going to be harder for you to build back up to the seven. So you're going to do this, and then you'll be fine parking for a bit. See if you get a lesson or two off you to draw for next turn and the turn after. But next turn, you're probably just going to run out the old Welsh Green Dragon. Um, Scribble Fours is going to be played on, oh, on Locked In and on um, Ron. That's going to force... Mike to sacrifice one of his lessons to the Forbidden Corridor, pretty smart. And also make it so that, uh, you know, the Forbidden Corridor is going to stay in play another turn. Because he's not going to be able to kind of, you know, there's no benefit to him to sack this potion. We would charm to discard. Oh, that's sorry. That's uh, from the table to discard, not from his hand. That's right. He draws to hand. It's a lesson. I just. Mm, it's tough. He's going to gain Ron and the lesson, I imagine, are coming down, right? Oh, no. He just drew one. So he gains and plays Ron. Passes. Kind of uh, assuming his opponent's eventually going to run out of these. Wait, why did he get rid of Forbidden Corridor? Oh, he chose to sack the Forbidden Corridor. Interesting. He wanted to keep seven lessons in hand. Now he's going to... Oh, he actually drew a lesson, so he's going to play Defendo. Uh, and Defendo is you're just going to choose one of the cards, and you just get rid of it. And he gets rid of Ron. The locked in's gone, too, so he has that second action. He's going to... Oh, no, he used, sorry, uh, lesson and then Defendo. That's right. The Welsh Green Dragon's next turn. Now, you know what's funny here is that um, obviously when the dragon comes down, things are going to be very different. But 
Mike isn't feeling too like even though he's so behind on board position and all the stuff's happening it's still one of those things where like as long as he gets to the combo he can win so he just has to kind of get there um and it's not that he's made no progress i mean he's made progress and we've watched it get walked back but there's time still right like he does have some time as we're looking at well they go both players kind of on even numbers in deck now again i realize that it's about to be minus six on mike's side from the welsh green um but all right looks like we're gonna go ahead and play hannah abbott and use her ability to change the two cards in our hand into lesson this is us just kind of uh wait what are we Oh, we're trading the uh, the potions and the charms from hand for Ron and something else. Ron and locked in. Okay. Now this is going to be the dragon in a lesson turn. We used an action to draw a card. Wow. Scribble for again. I mean, I'll tell you what. Uh... I mean, the, the, the three times that we've watched Jerry just use an action to draw a card, it's been, like, just an insanely good play for that turn. I mean, he's opting not to scribble for us here, but, uh, you know, we could have just used that first. And, you know, we could have just, like, drawn for a turn, gotten scribble for us, done that, and that would have been a totally fine turn. Totally fine, normal turn. Uh, we did opt to finally get the Welsh screen in play, though, and just start trying to actually win. On youngest brother yeah mike just really uh i think that he was making a lot of smart decisions looking at the long game getting close to coming back a few times here but uh jury especially those few turns where he's like <laughs> uh gets the perfect card to make the forbidden corridor worse right off the top or something like that those were pretty crippling for mike just like when he thought he might be able to come back in no 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 but that's the idea right that's the whole deck is that it's chock full of these things that once he accelerates to the top end of the lesson curve, uh, he's able to just walk back everything you do, and then the Forbidden Corridor walks more stuff back over time until eventually, you know, it's just this insurmountable action advantage on his side of the table. Now Mike is uh, he's starting to feel the effects of the well screen, and I think that he's being uh, where he had a whole lot of time to build and look for stuff before. Basically all at a time now we're gonna probably discard two here to gain an action off the back of flitwick and play the potion yeah again we're still trying to do the thing you know still trying to build uh we take another six our opponent draws a card for turn our opponent is in you know the low cards in hand range but the thing about this uh for mike is he needs to survive flitwick is going to be able to get him back a card that needs you know farm power but um you can't even get healing cards i just don't know that there's many or any charms healing cards besides actually i don't know are there any charms healing cards probably lost notes is gonna hit that last lesson yeah i think that uh that it's finally time for mike to move on to game two here i mean this was you know, while it looked really, really bad for Mike the whole game, and it was, he still had a path. You know, however narrow, however, you know, covered and overgrown, there was still a small path to victory that he was trying to find, and Jerry was doing <laughs> the best that he could to make sure Mike stayed lost in the woods, right? Uh, I mean, Jerry is just going to come and remove anything that Mike plays, and when he had those turns where the corridor was down... He was making great decisions on what to remove to make sure that the corridor choice was basically rocking a hard place. Just uh, the most potent choices he could create for his opponent to just really, really just hurt them. Just, oh man, you're going to have to choose between lesson and not going to do anything. Because you're going to, you're trying to build to four and five 
So that means the Forbidden Corridor will stay in play. Yeah, I mean, just being able to use things like Scribble of Horrors to walk back, like, two entire turns of mics. Uh, once you get to that point in the game, these control decks, especially the Transfiguration control cards that are seven cost and higher, are absolutely absurd. Just really, really powerful. We saw Mike kind of try to slow his opponent down at the beginning of the game last game by playing like an Escaping the Dursleys. Uh, Jerry had exactly what his deck wants, and we talked about how, you know, he we don't know what his draw engines are, but he had a hand without enough lessons in it, and he mulligan, and boom, there it was, a hand with, you know, as many lessons as he could possibly play. He had six lessons by turn three, exactly what his deck wants to do, uh, and that kind of speed was actually really hard for Mike to keep up with. Now, both players did get a chance to sideboard. And I think that what that might look like for Mike is there might be a few more professors that get put into the deck. Um, I don't know if we're at just like one on Snape and Flitwick and, and McGonagall and those kinds of cards. Um, usually you want to be a little bit safe with them because if your opponent has them as a starter, they're dead in the deck. But in Revival, where there's a sideboard... Uh, some of the best professors you could just go ahead and load up on them because you know all right now it's totally safe um and those professors that are lessons have that nice benefit of giving mike the power he needs and also you know not letting forbidden corridor stick around they are more susceptible to the old regular removal because they cost two actions thankfully Seamus helps mitigate a little bit of that All right, game two. I think both players are just ensuring that their uh, their sideboard worked properly, because I know that there were reported some issues with that. Okay. All right, we've drawn our opening hands. And we are ready to jump into game two. I wonder what these guys have sided to try and improve the matchup. Uh, like I said, if I was Mike, I'd probably be looking to put in some more of the non-lesson lessons right on the backs of those characters to try and circumvent some of the Forbidden Corridor. Uh, looks like Jerry might have gone and just slapped in the uh, the filters. I don't know if we saw those before. The adventure hate in the sideboard making sense. Picking on Neville, making his appearance. I'm sure that was in main deck, though. And we're off to the races. And, um, yeah, I, I just don't think that, uh, unfortunately, Escaping the Dursleys is that strong against the Hermione deck here. Uh, Hermione is, of course, going to just want to jam all of these lessons that are in the hand right away. Um... You know, so it's going to be less and less. Oh, no. Oh, man. Hermione, look at that. That's the perfect first three turns or two turns. Six lessons. Um, the locked in, I think, would have been more effective. But I mean, how do you know? The thing that I think about escaping the Dursleys is that I, we didn't notice our opponent play. Um, play outs to escape the Dursleys, really. Maybe there's a piece or something in the deck, but we did notice our opponent playing a metric buttload of lessons uh opening with escaping the dursleys is our very first play i think is pretty bold considering there's a really high chance our opponent just plays his first few turns like normal and then uses escaping the dursleys to get the perfect follow-up to ramping up to this high number 
I mean, you know, here we go. Yeah, we're, we're just going to go ahead and find the Forbidden Corridor now. We we gave him the Forbidden Corridor opener. It's a little bit strange. I just feel like... Uh, I don't know. I, I I almost would have sided out. Just gave you the Dursleys against this deck. But you can never be too sure. You know, maybe, you know, there's a lot of games where you play Escape of the Dursleys this early and you, uh, you hit it and they just don't have much. They wanted to play some characters and they get really stuck. Oh my goodness. But look, uh, um, look at that. And Escape of the Dursleys though, because we, we did find the open air we wanted, uh, Mike did get, you know, the early potions lessons into the self story cauldron. Uh, he's got the burrow down already. Um, I, I think this is one of those things where his opponent is, uh, is going to have to come up with a, a turn to stop this right now. But I, again, because of the escaping the Dursleys, I don't know if it's going to be too tough for him, right? Because what he does here is he just solves escaping the Dursleys and he gets a picking on Neville and he gets rid of, um, self-stirring cauldron and the burrow. I think we're in a pretty rough spot. I mean, he, he's looking at the cards in his hand. He really likes them, but, you know, basically pretend you don't have any of those cards in your hand. Uh, he's considering whether or not he wants to play the lessons now. I don't think so. I think you need to do something about the burrow combo before before it just happens. I get that we play Escaping the Dursleys because it helps keep our opponent in that hand range for burrow combo. Uh, that nice low count of cards in their hand. Make sure we can kill him. And there's no way for us to know, right, that they're sitting there strapped, absolutely strapped to the gills with six to eight lessons by the second turn. But boy, oh boy, was Jiri strapped. I mean, we got right to that perfect six lesson turn two that we always want. And yeah, it looks like we are electing to play two more. And now we're going to solve escaping the Dursleys um, using our first action on the Hermione. We might be going to get what scribble is here do you think oh no we are going to elect for the forbidden corridor interesting um i think the forbidden corridor is a little bit weak here because we lose the game if our opponent top decks um nuffling potion right like our opponent's gonna get rid of his potion lesson at the beginning of his turn why does uh wait Why did we lose the burrow and the lesson? Oh, 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 duh. It's a location. That's what I was like. What? The Forbidden Corridor actually counters the uh, the Burrow location. All right, so never mind, never mind. Uh, I'm wrong. Forbidden Corridor does counter the Burrow combo there, and it looks like Scribble of Horrors is going to be the card that we draw for turn. Uh, yeah, Mike plays locked in for his turn. Our opponent draws Scribble of Fours, and again, those top decks have been just straight gasoline. Uh, the Scribble of Fours is is perfect in this situation, and it's just going to go ahead and zoop two of the cards right off Mike's board. Um, that again, uh, you know, there's no way for him to know, but I think this really goes back to this, uh, escaping the Dursley early, just, we got into a real pickle. I guess we can, we can't really say that. That's not too fair though, right? Because escaping the Dursleys, let our opponent just do what they were going to do anyway. And then our opponent solved and played the Forbidden Corridor. But if we didn't play Escaping the Dursleys, we saw that our opponent top decked the Forbidden Corridor anyway, right? He had one in his hand when he solved Escaping the Dursleys. So it's really no different. Uh, in fact, it's actually slightly better to have played Escaping the Dursleys because we got rid of the other cards in his hand. There's something to be said for uh, the actions we used to play escaping the Dursleys and also something to be said for the choice over locked in. I think locked in early like that would have been, um, 
maybe not so bad, right? Maybe I guess your opponent just solves it and plays a, a lesson, but then we would have been a little bit even, just one lesson, one lesson. Uh, we're gonna escape in the Dursley Zim here, and we're gonna use Peeves. That's kind of fun because we're gonna fill his hand up with seven cards. He's gonna have to discard. Uh, Whomping Willow, wow. Uh, <laughs> Whomping Willow makes it, makes the cut. I mean, you're gonna get to nine, that's for sure. Uh, this just ditches three of your care magical creatures lessons, and uh, and then it is like kind of like a forbidden corridor thing where it gets rid of stuff before each turn. Uh, you know, gets rid of your opponent's stuff each turn. And obviously, big old damage card. Real big. Almost certainly, by the time you get up to Whomping Willow, though, you could just be, uh... You could just be playing other stuff to win, right? But hey, it's cool. It's a fun card. Thematic. I love that, uh, you know, Drew's whole hand here that he just drew is stuff that he doesn't really want anyway. So he's sitting pretty, right? He's happy with this escaping. That He's like, okay, uh, I didn't really want to draw most of this. So I'm going to go ahead and trade all this stuff in for what another scribble for us. That's pretty good. Because you solve escaping the Dursleys and you get rid of these. Put them back to nothing. I just think this is a really uh this is a tough spot uh, you try to always make it sound like it's close or two-sided mike had a little window there where um he might have been able to do the little combo i think now we're right back into hard control land here we'll see we'll see don't count out a you know a diaz that's for sure looks like we're just gonna invest a bunch of lessons into the board we're playing for the long game here we're just gonna go ahead and live at the dursleys no big deal Does give Mike a little bit of breathing room for one turn to set something up. I mean, like, are we, uh, did we build up this high so that we could escape the Dursleys and play a Whomping Willow on the field just to check a bingo card box? Because I'd be into that kind of flex. That is the thing about these uh the format where caught by snape is banned right there's very 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 few things that stop a uh, ramp deck from just ramping into the stratosphere We're going for a max value heal here from Mike. We're going to get uh, two self stirrings, burrow, and some lessons because this is really all the stuff we need. Everything in, that's in our hand is like extra utility kind of stuff. And the basics are what we need more than anything. We just need lessons, lessons, lessons. We need at least five of them. <laughs> we need them bad. What does Jiri need? Uh, bombs we're just looking for bombs and thankfully our opponent has got an adventure out on the table that lets us search our deck for one next turn i think things are looking pretty good for deary here i mean basically every version of his turn just looks silly right like solving escaping the Dursley to go get a Hedwig to get a Scribble for is solving escaping the Dursleys to just go get a Whomping Willow and play it on the field. Or, or, I mean, I don't even know. Maybe he has an 11 cost bomb in the deck somewhere. Giant Squid. I don't even know what Giant Squid costs. I feel like it's not 11.
Yeah, hey, called that one. Yep, so we, we solve the escaping the Dursleys. We get the Hedwig. We're going to play the Hedwig. And yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to get the old Whopping Willow, guys. There it is. Uh, Man, Mike, get to the Hover Charm quick. Get to the Hover Charm. <laughs> Put three of those lessons back in hand. Of course, Hermione can just bam two of them back onto the table next turn. Uh, I mean, I think it doesn't matter if it's a Whopping Willow or a Dragon or a Squid or anything. I just think that uh, Mike, he's kind of missed the window on building little combo um he's desperate to find another open window these things are going to be punching him in the face and sending pieces to the discard pile uh it actually helps him a little bit if he uh if he's able to just build and his opponent doesn't get those removal cards whopping willow kind of counts a little bit as a removal card though as you get to uh choose an item and play and discard oh no, 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 Mike. Whopping Willow is going to discard the self-stirring cauldron. Did we play a snuffling potion this turn that I missed? Because if we did, that's sick. No. Oh, man, so close, so close. Right, we just jammed a burrow. Uh, and then, yeah, our opponent starts his turn and just uses Whopping Willow to discard the item. And then throw away the top eight cards of your deck. Oh, no, 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 Mike. Did we... We must have missed that, right? I think... There's no way you would have gotten... Was it worth just to play this bro? Maybe. Right? Maybe. Uh, you know. We'll see. There's still some game left. Epoximize is gonna go... Oh, we, we sideboarded in the Epoximize. Very cool. I actually like to think that Jiri is playing one of each of these in his sideboard. Just, uh... The kind of snub his nose at all the people who are saying they would never ever play these cards ever. They're too narrow and they would never even put them in their cube. I think all those people were being way too harsh on these cards that are actually uh, pretty good at exactly this kind of situation. They they, <coughs> they are slightly win more, but I mean, uh, if we're just talking about cards that are like one degree win more, that's most control cards because the idea is that you get into a position where you're winning and then you continue winning. Um, I, I so I don't know if it's win more or so much. As another angle on control stuff creating one for one action when i have something that's uh deleting your actions or deleting things that you played you know like whopping willow or or i'm sitting here and neutral for us looks like me dealing you nine damage and nothing happening to me uh yeah you do everything you can to keep the board at parity at that point or at least keep your opponent's action uh economy neutral an uphill battle as we uh we get the burrow return to hand and now we can't replay it we jam out a potion lesson and pass we take another nine damage from hedwig and the whomping willow and i think the writing is on the wall for this one this is looking like uh like guys did you get out could get out your bingo cards we have whomping willow we have uh you know a epoximize card I think I just got a bingo for uh, for things I wanted to see in the revival tournament. Very very cool, Jerry, to be jamming out just this this huge ramp deck and yet another style. We see that uh, basically the ramp is his thing, right? He really likes that uh, the charms, potions, ramp deck. This creature transfiguration ramp deck is a whole new angle from him. Very neat. Uh, obviously doing very well for him in this event as Jerry goes on to be 4-0 after this, and uh, and Mike. Kind of, you know, rubbing, licking his wounds, taking that first loss, but uh, surely a shoe in for any kind of top cut as long as these guys both do well in their next round. And uh, I am excited to see how this deck does going forward. Congratulations to Jiri on taking this match. Two tough players. Really, really cool match to watch. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one at home. But until next time, that's round four. And we're signing off, guys.